Hello everybody, so I'm back in the studio today and uh, before I start I just wanted to thank you for all of the extra subscribes and likes and comments. Uh, keep them coming, I really uh, love all of that and it's really uh, uh, help helpful and kind of you to do that because uh, it keeps me going with these videos. So um, I'm having a bit of a hectic time because uh, next weekend, which is the 26th and 27th of June, we're having an open studios event here at Wood End, which is where I have a studio in an old mill in the Northwest. So if you're local, please do come along. Um, but what I want to talk to you about today is kind of what's behind me here. Uh, if you remember from some previous videos, I was talking about moving on to starting new works and I showed you how I prepped up the uh, panels and the canvases and so on. And what I want to do today is talk to you about the sorts of how I bring that work I do on location into the studio and why it's kind of important for me, even though I don't really use the work directly to copy from, that's not how I work. I wanted to be able to share with you um, the sorts of what I, how I kind of do it really, how I how I use the work in a very broad way as a way of getting me started with those paintings. So up in the studio on the walls now I have these two new sets of work. On this side I have the spring uh, woodland uh, and on that side I have what I'm calling my side of town which is this wonderful panoramic and with a valley that I can walk into. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the camera so that you can see each of those sides better and just talk a little bit about the significance for me of having these things plastered all over the walls and why I, I kind of do that. So uh, without further ado, I'm gonna um, sort of sort the camera out so that you can see uh, one side of the room more, more clearly. Okay, so this is the uh, work I created on location in the Spring Woodland. So I was out uh, sort of April time, so quite early on in the spring, to capture that sort of, you know, real beginnings of spring. And that's what I'd like this body of work to be about, really. So uh, on the, this side, I've got a whole range of charcoal drawings and then mixed media studies that I do out on location. Uh, and then over here, I've got actually down here, I've got some thumbnails, small thumbnails, mixed media, but done over a few in a few minutes. So I can really sort of focus in on what it is I'm interested in. Similarly, there are some black and white versions of those. And then I've done this Constantina, uh, which I do for most of my landscape subjects. And if you watch my videos for a while, you might have seen the Edgelands one where I took you through the process. So I pre-prepare these with some papers in the studio and some inks. I then work over them on location. I bring them back and I kind of edit them and simplify them. Uh, and then over here, you will have seen probably uh, some videos of me actually working with colour out on location with pastels very quickly. And then using those in a kind of collage approach, using scissors out on location and these kind of coloured with these coloured backgrounds. So a whole sort of range of studies. And you know, you may think, well, what on the earth would you do all of that for if they're not paintings and they're not finished works? But they kind of give me a lot of guidance really and a lot of understanding about what it is that I'm interested in. And the reason I put them around me in the studio is because it kind of almost gives me that feel again of that what I was feeling and how it was when I was out there. So when I'm doing my paintings, although I'm kind of responding quite intuitively in the sense that I'm not planning them and I don't know I'm putting that there and that there, I just work at them and they kind of take their own life. I don't think they can take their own life without any of that kind of perspective and background in my head. And by having these, it gives me that sort of feeling back again and that sort of, um, maybe even that kind of comfort of having the, these things around me. Um, and what I also do, and you may be able to see it, I've got a sort of a list of things here. And so what I do is I kind of write uh, down words and notes and things. Um, so those things are a sort of almost like a checklist that help me in the paintings. What it, What is it that I was feeling out in the woodland that I'd like to capture in my paintings? So if I'm looking down my list, I've got this one here that is fresh simplicity and I've put Japanese. And I suppose that's just one of the feelings I had when I was out there, this sort of 
real freshness of early spring. There's a sort of a simplicity to it. And there's that sort of sense of Japanese design about it. And I think that's something that I kind of know what that means. And I will hopefully be able to use that and sort of almost sort of say, look at my paintings and say, are these reflecting that, that description? So that's something I do quite a lot of. And the other thing that's quite useful is that by being out there and doing a lot of this colour capture, these backgrounds, for example, are almost like my colour palette in the making. So it's not like when I start my paintings, I'm not of, okay, so let's think about a colour palette. You know, when I'm out and about, I write down the colours and how I feel about them and their descriptions, and then I kind of create them. That's what I've done here. And I've used them as backgrounds. And then I'm going to use those when I'm painting and developing. So it's almost like it's part of uh, quite a bit of work is done for me by the process of being out and about and exploring. And I bring these back into the studio to provide me with that sort of framework um, so that it gives me that sort of support as I'm working. So I hope that helps and um, I'll turn around now and share with you uh, the other uh, work, which is my side of town. And I've introduced and talked about this a little bit before, but just so you can kind of see this sort of um, understand the, the stuff I've got on here. I've got the panoramic photographs uh, over there. Uh, I've got a series of black and white drawings. Some of them are literal views. Um, I've got some simplified drawings here, line drawings. And then I've got some additional cover pieces here and some mini collage works, much the same as I do thumbnails, but with collage there. And this um, whole range of work has been done over a period of time, actually, because I started getting very interested in what is called Lusley Black Brows, which is this wonderful valley with the panoramic view, very early on in the first lockdown. So right way back at the beginning of 2020, or well, April, May time. And so and quite a few of these studies I did then, and subsequently, um, I've been using um, this location to sort of develop more work. And I've been doing that with the St Ives School of Painting. So some of these black and white line drawings have been done through that. Um, but it's all really about unpicking and understanding what it is I'm interested in with this wonderful valley and view. And this uh, pink piece here, which you probably hopefully can see, uh, was done very recently and it's my typical of my mixed media way of working where I'm on location acting quite intuitively and I was trying to just capture the wonderful rhododendrons that are right down the banks all in bright pink at the moment uh, and so in terms of what this kind of why I put all of these over the walls I find it just very helpful in the same way that I was talking about the spring woodland having these is really gives me some anchor points and gives me some understanding so that when I start my paintings and these ones are going to be kind of long panoramics but they are probably going to be less representational uh, than they are uh, you know and they're probably going to be you know sort of semi-abstract maybe more abstract depends on how how they they turn out um, so these kind of give me those sorts of anchor points and understanding really and reference points because it, it, when I'm working and, and trying to be intuitive, I have to do it with a bank of information in my head, as I was explaining for the spring woodland. So these studies will give me that sort of understanding, really. And so say, for example, from doing all of this body of studies, what I do and understand and, and doing this and working in the, um, in the sketchbook extensively, I have, it's a bit like the words I was talking about for the spring woodland. I have this understanding of some of the key things that are important to me in this landscape. Uh, things such as the way that the uh, stone walls form the boundary and the way they've got quirky posts that lead into the valley and the way the sort of valley swoops down and the significance of certain plant types and then how the, the panoramic is in the sort of background to that. And so some of those lines and shapes um, and uh, sort of uh, elements uh, are really important to me. And, and I've kind of worked that out by unpicking it. So if I hadn't done any of these studies, um, when you come to do the, the paintings, I, I find that quite hard. I need to have that sort of memory bank in my head. And so similarly to the Spring Woodland, these give me this whole sort of uh, repertoire 
And what I will do from these is, is not only will I paint on the panels and on the canvases, but I will also um, develop studies from the paintings, if you like, to sort of work things out and under understand things. Um, and it's through this body of work here, which is some black and white, some colour, some collage, that I kind of have my sort of, it's almost um, not exactly a safety net, but it does provide me with some grounding. If I'm going to be courageous in the painting, and I'm going to go for it. Having these references and some ways of unpicking things, and this is a sort of a background, just helps me. And maybe it would help, you know, if you're a painter, maybe that, that sort of thing helps you too. It's interesting to know we all work quite differently. But for me, having this, as I say, in the studio, is just a really nice sort of start point for me. Um, and it could be, although I said I won't use these directly, there may be certain things that I, I start doing on the painting and then I will come to this wall and, and look for how that could be, you know, what it's about and how I could kind of develop it in the painting. And then I might well be referencing maybe one of these small collages or one of these original drawings as a way of getting a foothold into what it is that the painting is, where the painting is taking me. And I think in the end with these things, these, the reason I said that these, I'm not copying these is because I think what happens is there are start, these are, are start points. And when you start the painting, you get these start points, but then the painting sort of develops it on its own in a way. And then you follow that. So the painting takes over and the process of the painting takes over. But inevitably, there is this dipping back and forth. And as the painting develops, there are points I find when I get really, I kind of reach brick wall stuck points. And so having these to sort of help me understand, and certainly with the words and everything as well, it just gives me that sort of that help. Anyway, so I hope that's helpful. It's just a way of, you know, me explaining. This is how I set up my wall, um, wall so that I'm painting in one corner and I've got all these, you know, sort of drawings and everything on the other. I just thought it would be useful to sort of share that with you. So thanks very much for watching and please do like and subscribe and I'll catch you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.